So, I welcome uh, this is Dr. Jayendra Kumar from Ishan Institute of Pharmacy, Gita Noida. So, today we have uh, organized this uh, national level webinar and uh, Dr. R.K. Maheshwari, Professor, Department of Pharmacy, SGSITS, Indore, Madhya Pradesh, has joined us. Audible to all of you. That's why I welcome you all on this uh, national level webinar at Ishan Institute of Pharmacy, Data Noida. And today, uh, our speaker, sir, Dr. R.K. Maheshwari, who is professor at GSITS Indore, is with us now. I welcome you, sir. And thank you so much for uh, giving us your precious time today. And uh, thank you. Introduce, uh, uh, sir, to all the uh, delegates who are present over here. The delegates are from all over India, and uh, some of them are professors, assistant professors, associate professors, as well as the students. And uh, so, uh, Dr. R.K. Maheshwari, sir, is presently working as professor in the Department of Pharmacy, SGSITS, Indore, Madhya Pradesh. He's a very prestigious institute, and sir has a very vast experience in this field. He has guided more than 72 MPharm students for their thesis. Currently, two PhD have been awarded under uh, such guidance, and one is pursuing. Sir has published more than 189 research papers in various national and international journals. And Sir has also uh, presented in uh, more than 150 conferences. He has, he has received several awards uh, of uh, national and international reputes. And, uh, uh, to our surprise, sir has delivered more than 200 lectures till now uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, in, in his field of specialization, especially in this uh, solvency, the mixed solvency and hydrotropy. And uh, he has uh, he has filed uh, more than three uh, Indian patents. Sir, I welcome you to our institute and uh, welcome you, uh, sir. A very warm welcome to this webinar. Thank you so much for giving us time. So I would now, now request sir to please take over. And uh, okay. the audiences, uh, they are waiting for your, uh, to listen your wise words. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you for nice introduction. Firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Jayendra Kumar who has given this chance to me to deliver the lecture to uh, say uh, the research ideas, new research ideas. Uh, Okay, in my lecture, uh, firstly, I would like to give some uh, brief uh, introduction about my lecture. What you shall get in my lecture? You shall get uh, the ways by which we can minimize the use of harmful organic solvents by solubilizing, by utilization of solubilizing power of solids. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, in this lecture, uh, you will find the ways to minimize the harmful uh, means uh, how to utilize solubilizing power of solids to uh, minimize the use of harmful organic solvent. Firstly, uh, some uh, uh, theory regarding the dissolution should be known to the students and teacher that what happens in the dissolution. Suppose we dissolve, say, dextrose in water, you dissolve metformin hydrochloride in water, you get clear solution. What happens here? There is a weak one and one forces, and of course, the hydrogen bonding between the molecules of solute, solute means a metformin hydrochloride, and molecules of solvent means water molecules. So, always there is hydrogen bonding or weak one and one forces uh, between the molecules of solute and molecules of solvent. So, uh, uh, the, this is a simple theory of dissolution. Suppose you are dissolving some compound in organic solvent. So, for example, you are dissolving ibuprofen in ethanol. You get a clear solution. What is the reason for getting this clear solution? 
uh, the reason for dissolution is hydrogen bonding at weak one to one forces between the molecules of ibuprofen and molecules of ethanol. So very simple theory of this dissolution. Up to this time, from the literature and from the books, all of you know that whatever the substance exists in the form of liquids, they all are known as solvent. Water, ethanol, methanol, chloroform, etc., etc. They all are known as solvents. But there is no solvent which is universal solvent. I am sorry, I am not good. So anyway, let me first uh, share the slide, then I will talk to you. Uh, because sometimes you take it around. Share a screen, Karun. Share a screen. Share a screen. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Is this slide visible? Is this slide visible? Dr. Jayan? I am not going to mute the mute mute Sir, you are audible. Dr. Jayendra. Uh, yes, is it visible? Is it visible? Yes, sir. The slides. Yes, sir. These slides are visible. Uh, okay. Sir, these slides are visible. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think now, Dr. Jayendra, it is visible, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see the slide. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, uh, actually, what I was explaining to all of you that up to this time, from the literature, we know that whatever the substances they are present in the liquid state at room temperature, they all are known as solvent. But there is no universal solvent. Means whether it is DMSO, water, ethanol, methanol, chloroform, no liquid or so-called solvent is good universal solvent means whatever the name of any solvent we take that solvent possesses good solubilizing power for some solute and bad solubilizing power for other solute this statement is correct for each and every so-called solvent okay for example we know from the literature that about one third of the drugs they are water soluble two third of the drugs they are water insoluble so whether it is dmso any any solvent uh, a very uh, simple statement which could be remembered by all of us uh, uh, to understand this lecture that whatever the name of any solvent you will take that solvent possesses good solubilizing power for some solute and bad solubilizing power for other solutes. Okay, so uh, in my lecture now you will find uh, that all molecules which are present in this universe, I have started very new concept known as mixed solvency concept. And the first parameter of this mixed solvency concept is this that each and everything present in this universe has got solubilizing power. Each and everything means whether the substance is liquid, whether the substance is solid, whether the substance is gas. All molecules which are present in this universe have got solubilizing power. Only thing will be if you want to see that uh, solubilizing power of gases, the molecules of gases should be in liquid state. If you want to see the solubilizing power of solid, the molecules of solid should be in liquid state. These things I will explain in my lecture later on. But up to this time, actually, what I want to tell you that all the molecules which are present in this universe have got solubilizing power because all molecules can be involved in liquid state in hydrogen bonding and weak one to one forces with the molecules of solutes. So this thing uh, I will explain and that's why, of course, we can utilize the solids as solvent. How? That I will uh, explain with uh, examples in my lecture. So, particularly, I will focus on the utilization of the solids for replacing harmful organic solvent. One more thing: so many doubts may come to your mind, whether you are a student, or teacher, or researcher. 
whatever the doubt comes to your mind please note it down at the end of the lecture we will have question answer session i will give the reply i will give the answer for your questions okay now i will start my lecture uh, uh, by the support my presentation now now the today's topic is eco friendly techniques using hydrotropy mixed hydrotropy and mixed solvency this is the today's topic and which is which is more or less same as it is there is on your screen solubilizing properties of solids cell replace harmful organic solvent now something about the organic solvents various organic solvents are employed in various analytical techniques like tlc hptlc hplc uv spectrophotometry titrimetry etc also organic solvents are involved in extraction of hydro constituent from herbal powders also organic solvents are involved in the synthesis of organic compounds also organic solvents are involved in the formulation of pharmaceutical doses found also organic solvents are involved in identifying the types of drug now drawbacks of organic solvents organic solvents have innumerous adverse effects caused by single exposure like dermatitis headache drowsiness nausea eye uh, irritation etc long term exposure causes serious ill effects such as neurological disorders chronic renal failure liver damage neurosis mutagenesis disorder etc so uh, means uh, most of the organic solvents they are very injurious to the health of human being and health of animals etc not only they are harmful for human being but also organic solvents are costly they are costly as well and they are disposal disposal of organic solvents after they are used from the laboratories from the industry it requires a special treatment means before they are thrown away after they are used they are supposed to be given a particular treatment so which involves cost again means again the disposal of organic solvent is also costly now some classes of organic solvents should be known to the students and teachers and all that in class 1 organic solvents commonly employed they are benzene which is carcinogenic carbon tetrachloride which is also very harmful for human being one two dichloroethane it is also toxic and all that so these are uh, class 1 organic solvents most of them uh, they are very harmful the last two organic solvents commonly employed uh, by red ink they are written acetonitrile chloroform toluene methanol pyridine hexane nn dimethyl formate etc so this is a list of commonly employed class 2 organic solvents means uh, in analysis for these and extracts and all that now class 3 organic solvents uh, commonly employed acetic acid acetone ethanol ethyl acetate etc and uh, if we see uh, the harmfulness of these organic solvents class 3 organic solvents they are relatively safer than class 2 organic solvents Sir, uh, are you audible? Uh, uh, yes, you we can it. see uh, the uh, the very first slide of uh, of the presentation. Rest of the slide, uh, if you are changing it, then uh, we are uh, not able to see the other slide. At present, uh, I, I can see the uh, the first slide. Uh, first slide, you have seen. This is not the first slide. Sir, currently uh, you are on second or third slide. Uh, this is, uh, I think, fourth slide. The last two, three are going to be visible. Is it or not? sir the slide is visible but only first slide is uh, coming over uh, in this acha abhi yani wo change nahi ho rahi hai slide slides are not changing sir correct sir acha acha na 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 main apna karwa main bulata hu student ko bulata hu wo batayenge kyunki keval ye dikh rahi hai aapko ek hi dikh rahi hai na sir first achha. slide in which uh, the uh, okay ab wo ha student aa raha hai wo batata hai tab tak main aapse dusri baat kar leta hu yes sir Thank anyway you. so what i wanted to tell you uh, ki what we have seen abhi main verbally batata hu aapko ki class 1 organic solvent they include benzene chloro uh, carbon tetrachloride class 2 organic solvent common in fact is methanol dimethyl formamide uh, toluene etc uh, class 2 organic solvents are more hard uh, means relatively safer than class 1 organic solvent class 1 organic solvent they are harmful most class 2 are relatively safer than class 1 organic solvent class 3 uh, organic solvent which commonly employed they are 
ethanol, acetone, uh, ether, etc. They are relatively safer than glass to our experiment. Anyway, uh, I will show you by slides also. Uh, let them come, the students come. Then uh, I will see where is the part. Anyway, uh, now in my lecture, uh, I will tell you means, uh, uh, means uh, I will go first one example here that how can we replace harmful organisms. Now see in the case of uh, assay of fusamide uh, bulk drug, fusamide means fusamide bulk drug. How it is done by Indian pharmacopoeal method? We have to dissolve fusamide in dimethyl carbamide. After the dissolution of uh, this fusamide in dimethyl carbamide, when it is very clear solution, bromothymol blue indicator, few drops they are added, and then titration is performed using 0.1 molar annual solution. Then using a factor, we can find out the drug content of Fusamide. So what you are doing, you have to use dimethyl paramide in ended pharmacopoeal method. And dimethyl paramide is class to arachnid solvent. Okay, now I have replaced this dimethyl paramide by use of sodium manuate solution, hydrotropic solution. Means solubilizing power of a solid, in other words, you may say. So 30% bit by volume solution of sodium benzoate made in water was employed in place of dimethyl paramide. So what did I do? I dissolved through some my drug in 30% weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate, then bromothymol value indicator was added, and titration was performed in 0.1 molar annual solution. So what I have missed, what, what has been done? Dimethyl paramide has been replaced by sodium benzoate solution. And sodium benzoate, you know, it is solid at room temperature. So it's a concentrated solution was employed as solvent to carry out the titrimetric analysis. So in this way, sodium benzoate solution has replaced a class two harmful organic solvent, dimethyl paramide. Okay. Now select there will be a change in any orange slide. Okay, only orange change. पहले इसको करके देखो एक बार पहले यही कर देते पूछ है हमें पहले इसको फुल कर दें ना अपन तो वो यहीं से वो भी सेम ही होगी शॉर्टकट से ये जयेंद्र जी ये देख रहे हैं सलाइन यस सर यस सर नाउ इट्स आर्गेनिक सालेमेंट्स लिखा होगा ये वाली सलाइन देख रही है राइट सर राइट सर एक मिनट ये ये बदल गई और ये भी बदल गई यस सर यस सर चेंज हो रहा है सर बिल्कुल सही है राइट सर ओके ओके चलिए तो यहाँ से फिर शुरू कर देते हैं आपके यहाँ से आपका ये तो ये यहाँ से शुरू करता हूँ मैं फिर से वेरियस आर्गेनिक सॉल्वेंट सर इंप्लाइड इन वेरियस एनर्जी का टेक्निक्स लाइक टीएलसी एचपीटीएलसी एचपीएलसी यूवी इफेक्टोफोटोमेटी also organic solvent they are in, involved in formation of pharmaceutical process forms also organic solvent they are involved in identification test of drug what i wanted to tell you in this way you find a wide use of a vast use of organic solvent in our analysis and formulation extraction etc okay now some drawbacks of organic solvent organic solvents have numerous adverse effects caused by single exposure like dermatitis Headache, drowsiness, nausea, eye irritation, etc. So by single exposure. Okay. Long term exposure uh, causes serious ill effects such as neurological disorders, chronic renal failure, liver, liver damage, neurosis, mutagenesis disorder, etc. So in this way, you find that they are very injurious to the human health and animal health. Okay. Not only they are injurious to our health, but also organic solvents are costly. And 
their disposal their disposal means their disposal of organic solvent after they are used from the industry and from the institutions and all that uh, that require a special treatment means before they are thrown away they are supposed to be given a particular treatment then only they can be thrown away so again a cost involving factor this one through this the uh, thrown away of is uh, organic solvent also involves uh, cost uh, factor okay now some classes of organic solvents should be known to the student class on organic solvent commonly employed there benzene which is carcinogenic carbon tetrachloride which is toxic and environmental hazard causes one two dichloroethane it is also toxic and all that now class two organic solvents uh, red ink uh, if you see acetonitrile chloroform toluene methanol pyridine hexane and and dimethyl formaldehyde etc they are commonly employed Class two organic solvents are relatively safer than class one, but then also they are harmful. These class two, class three organic solvents commonly employed acetic acid, acetone, ethanol, ethyl acetate, etc. And class three organic solvents are relatively safer than class two and class one organic solvent. In my lecture, I will uh, explain. Uh, I will give some example that. We we can potentiate the solvent power of class three organic solvent to act as class two or class one organic solvent, so that harmful effect of class two or class one organic solvent can be reduced to some extent by utilization of class three organic solvent. Okay, so we can potentiate the solvent power of class three organic solvent. This I will explain in my lecture. How can you potentiate the solvent power? Okay. future role of solvent character of solids solubilizing power of solids shall minimize the use of harmful organic solvents in future class 3 organic solvents are relatively safer than class 2 and class 1 organic solvent we can potentiate the solvent power of class 3 organic solvent by dissolving safe solids in them to replace class 2 and class 1 organic solvents now what happens in dissolution again we have to see this what happens in the dissolution dissolution of a solute in a solvent involves hydrogen bonding and weak van der waals forces between the molecules of solute and molecules of solvent and this i have explained again let me explain actually what happens sir how the dissolution takes place suppose you are dissolving say uh, sodium salicylate in water sodium salicylate in water you get a clear solution how you are getting a clear solution because of hydrogen bonding and weak van der waals forces between the molecules of sodium salicylate and molecules of water if you are dissolving sodium benzoate in water to get a sodium benzoate solution the same thing hydrogen bonding weak van der waals forces between the molecules of sodium benzoate and molecules of water if you are dissolving something in organic solvent like glucosamine you are dissolving in dimethyl formamide you are getting clear solution why you are getting clear solution because of hydrogen bonding and weak van der waals forces between the molecules of glucosamine and molecules of vmf very simple theory of dissolution is there mixed solvency concept proposed by me in the year 2009 states that each and every substance each and every substance whether the substance is gas whether the substance is liquid whether the substance is solid present in this universe has got solubilizing power in other words you may say whatever the molecules of present in this universe whether they are in the gas phase whether they are in the solid phase whether they are in liquid phase all molecules possess solubilizing power but only thing will be how the gas molecules will demonstrate their solubilizing power when gas molecules will be in liquid state number one number two solids when the molecules of solid will be in liquid state then you can see the solubilizing power of solid this i will explain in my lecture later on okay so in this way what we are getting that all molecules possess solubilizing power because all in all molecules may be involved in hydrogen bonding and weak van der waals forces between the molecules uh, of solute and molecules of solvent like this so they may be involved uh, to make hydrogen bonding weak van der waals forces with the molecules of solute for for their dissolution like this okay once the i am reading from the slide once the molecules of gas or the molecules of solid come in liquid state they may also be involved in hydrogen bonding and weak van der waals forces with the molecules of solute for the dissolution of that particular solute 
uh, I have told you that uh, as soon as some doubt comes to your mind, as some, uh, if you want to ask some question, when you note it down at the end of the lecture, you will have a question answer session. Okay. About the solvents, whatever matter exists in liquid state at room temperature is known as solvent. Water, ethanol, methanol, PE, 400, glycerin, propylene, glycol, etc., etc. Each liquid are the so called solvent, possesses good solubilizing power for some solute and bad solubilizing power for other solutes. Uh, this is a statement is, uh, uh, is to be remembered by us to understand the theory. Similarly, each matter, whether matter is a liquid or gas or solid, is known as solubilizer in mixed solvency concept. I have started new concept known as mixed solvency concept in the year 2009. And uh, the first parameter of uh, this uh, mixed solvency concept, there are two parameters. First parameter says that each and everything present in the universe has a solubilizing power. And second para parameter says that if you make a concentrated solution using different solubilizer, they can give solubility enhancement for your compound. Okay. Now, so what I wanted to tell you, as all substances which are present in liquid state at room temperature, they are known as solvent. In this particular theory, all molecules are known as solubilizers, whether they are gas, solid, or liquid. All are solubilizers. But only thing will be, Whatever the name of any solubilizer you take, that solubilizer possesses good solubilizing power for some solute and bad solubilizing power for other solute. Just like solvent, same statement is with each and every solubilizer as per mixed solvency concept. Similarly, each matter, whether liquid, gas, or solid, is known as solubilizer in mixed solvency concept. Molecules of all solids in liquid state, molecules of all gases in liquid state also possess good solubilizing power for some solute and bad solubilizing power for other solutes. Now, before giving the examples, before uh, discussing this uh, screen, uh, this slide, uh, I would like to explain first how can we say that gases have got solubilizing power. So, uh, there are two ways by which the molecules of gas may come in liquid state. The molecules of a gas may come in liquid state by liquid reaction. Number two, if you dissolve a gas in a particular solvent, then also the molecules of gas will be in liquid state. Now the examples of both. Example of liquid reaction. Supercritical fluid technology. In this technology, supercritical fluid technology, CO2, carbon dioxide gas, after liquefaction, is being employed as solvent to carry out different functions for the preparation of nanoparticles, for the extraction of active constituents from herbal powder, for the uh, purification of compounds, and so on. Four. Ultimately, liquefied CO2 is being used as solvent. How? Why? Because in liquefied state, CO2 molecules, they are in liquid state and these molecules of CO2 are involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one forces with, with the molecules of solutes. Okay, so in this way, liquefied CO2 is being used as solvent. But as I told you that all solubilizers do not possess good solubility for each and everything in the same way. Liquefied CO2 is not good solvent for each and every compound. How do we know this thing? In supercritical fluid technology, sometimes to potentiate the solvent power of liquefied CO2, you have to add more solvents like ethanol, methanol, etc. in supercritical fluid technology. Because if you do not add these two solvents, the solubilizing power of liquefied CO2 is poor for those substances. So in this way, it is now clear that liquefied CO2 is good solvent for some solute and bad solvent for other solute. Okay, and you have seen that by liquefaction, the molecules have come in liquid state. So if you liquefy any gas, oxygen, helium, nitrogen, any gas if you liquefy, it will be good solvent for some solutes and bad solvent for other solutes. Utilization of gases for their solubilizing power is a costly affair. Okay, now this was one way by liquefaction of gas. Number two way by which the molecules of a gas may come in liquid state is by dissolution in a solvent. For example, concentrated hydrochloric acid. What is that? 
concentrated hydrochloric acid contains about 38% weight by volume dissolved HCl gas. 38% means 100 gram of concentrated hydrochloric acid contains nearly 38 grams of HCl gas in dissolved condition. And in the dissolved condition, the molecules of HCl they are in liquid state. Okay. Now, if you check the solubility of nilidic acid, the solubility of nilidic acid in water is very poor. But the solubility of nilidic acid in concentrated hydrochloric acid is more than 5%. Means at least 5% is their solubility, very good solubility. Why? Of course, we are not making any formulation, but if there is very good solubility of nilidic acid in concentrated hydrochloric acid, what does that mean? It is due to, means it is as a result of hydrogen bonding at weak bond over forces between the molecules of dissolved HCl and molecules of nilidic acid. So very simple for means if you are dissolving a gas in a solvent, the molecules are in liquid state and these molecules may be involved in hydrogen bonding and weak bond over forces with the molecules of solute. So these were the examples of gases. But utilization of gases for their solubilizing power, they, they, it is costly affair, so I am leaving it aside. Now I am coming to a useful uh, mess of solids, you may say, means by uh, economic use of solids, by safe use of solids, we can replace harmful organic solvent. So before that, let us understand how can we say that solids also possess solubilizing power. Now, I, I have told you that solids will demonstrate their solubilizing power when the molecules of solid will come in liquid state. Then only they will dissolve their, uh, then only they will demonstrate their solubilizing power. Now, I will discuss three ways by which the molecules of a solid may come in liquid state. Number one, by melting. If you melt a solid, the molecules will be in liquid state. If you dissolve a solid in a solvent, the molecules will be in liquid state. Number three, if you make a eutectic liquid, then also the molecules will be in liquid state. Now the examples. Number one of melting. You see, uh, if you melt a urea, urea has got melting point of 132 degrees centigrade. 132 degrees centigrade. Okay. So suppose you take in your test tube one gram urea, you heat it on the heating mentor. At about 132 degrees centigrade, you will have a clear colorless melted urea liquid. One gram clear colorless melted urea liquid. Its a temperature is about 132 degrees centigrade, and uh, the liquid can be shaken like any liquid, any solvent. It can be shaken like this. Okay. In this one gram melted urea liquid, uh, one gram of dichloric sodium is nicely. 1 gram of dichloric sodium, which is a poorly soluble drug, poorly water soluble drug. Its solubility in water is limited, very less. Okay, so 1 gram of dichloric sodium can nicely be dissolved by 1 gram melted urea. You get a clear solution, although you are not making any formulation, but what you are observing that 1 gram melted urea is good solvent for dichloric sodium. Is uh, Dichloric sodium has got very good solvent in melted urea. Okay, one more thing. Uh, the melting point of diphosphonic sodium is 283 degrees centigrade. 283 degrees centigrade. So, there is no melting of diphosphonic sodium. Rather, you are getting a solution of diphosphonic sodium in melted urea. If you cool this liquid, it will solidify. It is different thing. But at the time of temperature 132 degrees centigrade, where the urea is in liquid state, it is very good solvent for dichloric sodium. What is the reason for this? The reason is the solubilizing power of the urea molecules. The urea molecules, they are in liquid state and these molecules of urea, they are involved in hydrogen bonding and heat bonding forces with the molecules of dichloric sodium. That's why you get a clear solution of dichloric sodium in this way. Okay, uh, so uh, this is a proof that urea means a solid has got solubilizing power. Suppose there was no solubilizing power in melted urea liquid, then you could have obtained a suspension of dichloric sodium in there. Okay, so anyway, this is a proof that solids have got solubilizing power. Another proof for melting, if you take similarly, if you take phenol, 
Phenol melting point is 44 degree centigrade. So one gram melted phenol liquid, which can be taken like any solvent, and nicely dissolves nitric acid. About 500 milligram nitric acid is nicely dissolved by one gram of melted phenol at about 44 degree centigrade. Okay. Again, the reason for dissolution is uh, hydrogen bonding weak one and one forces between the molecules of phenol and molecules of nitric acid. Otherwise, nitric acid is a poorly water soluble drug. Like, okay. Uh, of course, we are not making any formulation, just we are seeing a proof that after melting phenol liquid, the molecules have, uh, they have uh, come in liquid state for hydrogen bonding and weak one and one forces with the molecules of nitric acid. So, these were the proof one. Uh, of melting. Number two, another way by which the molecules of a solid may come in liquid state is by dissolution in a solvent. For example, three examples are here by dissolution. Number one, water here is used as solvent. The solubility of ibuprofen in water is very poor 0.028% weight by volume. Poor solubility of ibuprofen in water 0.028% weight by volume. If you employ 28.8% weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate in water, a concentrated solution. You may say nearly 30% weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate in water. Now, the solubility of ibuprofen in this solution is about 2.390%. 2.390%. So, 2.390 divided by 0 0.028 is nearly 85. Nearly 85 fold solubility enhancement is there. What is the reason here? Sodium benzoate is solid at room temperature, but when you dissolve it in water, the molecules of sodium benzoate they are available in liquid state. And now these molecules of sodium benzoate are involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one one forces with the molecules of ibuprofen. That's why you get a large solubility of ibuprofen in concentrated solution of sodium benzoate. Of course, it is a type of hydrotropic agent which I will discuss. This hydrotopy I will discuss later on in my lecture. So, what you are saying, if uh, the molecules of a solid may come in liquid state by dissolution in this solvent number. So, here what was solvent? Number two, ethanol solvent. The ethanol is poor solvent for fluzamide. The solubility of fluzamide in ethanol is about 1.7% weight by volume. 1.7% weight by volume. Okay. Uh, sparingly solubility. But if we employ 15% weight by volume solution of Niacinamide in ethanol, in ethanol, 15%. Weight by volume, niacinamide solution. Niacinamide is a solid at room temperature. In this solution, the solubility of fluzamide is about 5%. 5% is 5 divided by 1.7. Nearly 3 fold enhancement in solubility there. What is the reason for solubility enhancement? The molecules of niacinamide are available in ethanol in a liquid state. And these molecules are also involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one of forces. Again, I am repeating. You see, previously what you were observing, solubility 1.7%. So it is due to hydrogen bonding and weak one of forces between the molecules of fluzamide and molecules of ethanol. So limited solubility. But now niacinamide has come in solution. The molecules are present in solution. And these molecules are also involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one of forces. With the molecules of fluzamide, that's why you get large solubility. Okay, so here this is another solvent in all the molecules of niacinamide, they are able to liquid state for uh, solubilizing itself. Number three is propylene glycol solvent. The solubility of pyroxicam and propylene glycol is very poor, about 5 milligram per ml. About 5 milligram per ml. When we dissolve two solids in propylene glycol. 10% sodium acetate, 10% sodium caprylene. So total became 20%. So this 20% solution in which 10% sodium acetate, 10% sodium caprylene is there. In this solution, in propylene glycol, the solubility of pyroxicam is about 120 milligram per ml. 120 milligram per ml. So 120 divided by 5 is about 24. About 24 fold enhancement in solubility is there. What is the reason for this? The molecules of two solids, sodium acetate and sodium caprylate, they are available in liquid state. And these molecules are also involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one to forces with the molecules of pyroxicam. That's why you have got the you have got large solubility. So these were the examples of how the molecules of a solid may come in liquid state by dissolution. 
These just they all are examples. Do not relate with formulations. Okay. Third way by which the molecules of the solid may come in liquid state is by eutectic formation. Now, if you take uh, methyl thymol, means five gram methyl, five gram thymol. If you dry it with the help of fish water, you get a clear, colorless liquid, eutectic liquid. Methyl thymol, five five gram trituration, clear, colorless liquid, which is known as eutectic liquid. Now, the properties of this eutectic liquid of thymol and methyl. Of course, the pH of this liquid is nearly neutral, 6.5. Anyway, now if you take one ml of this eutectic liquid in which the molecules of methyl, molecules of thymol, they are in liquid state. One ml of this eutectic liquid that nicely dissolves more than 200 milligram of metronidazole benzoate. You see left hand column, metronidazole benzoate more than 200 milligram per ml is the solubility of this drug in this eutectic liquid. Of course. We are not making any formulation here. We are just seeing the proof. So uh, this means about 20% solubility, very good solubility of metronidazole benzoate in this eutectic liquid. Now, what what is the reason for this good solubility? The reason is same. The molecules of thymol, molecules of menthol, they are available in liquid state for hydrogen bonding and weak bond bond forces with the molecules of metronidazole benzoate. That's why you are getting a large solubility of metronidazole benzoate in this eutectric liquid. So in other words, we say that this eutectric liquid is very good solvent for metronidazole benzoate. We are not picking for the data that we find it well. Similarly, left hand column, atenolol, ornithazole, benzoate in the uterus, the desoxenol, BHE, salicylic acid, they all have got very good solubility in this eutectric liquid. Now we see right hand column, cetronidazole. Uh, less than 5 milligram of cetronidazole is dissolved by 1 ml of this effect. It means uh, very poor solubility of cetronidazole is there. Means you may say this eutectic liquid is uh, poor solvent for cetronidazole. Similarly, left hand column, fusamide, nemesolide, aspartame, etc. etc. They have got very poor solubility in this eutectic liquid. If you see another table, now here the liquids, miscibility or solubility of liquid, left hand column, miscible liquids, ethanol, propylene, glycol, benzyl, alcohol, etc. They are having very good solubility in this eutectic liquid, or in other words, it is miscibility, good miscibility. But right hand column, glycerin is immiscible in this eutectic liquid. Similarly, water is immiscible in this eutectic liquid. Okay, similarly, you, if you check thousands of compounds for their solubility in this eutectic liquid, some will fall in left hand column, some will fall in right hand column. Now you may say this eutectic liquid is good solvent for some compounds, bad solvent for other compounds. And this statement is true for each and every so called solvent, usual solvent. Again, I am repeating. Just like the so called solvent, whatever the name of any solvent you take, whether water, ethanol, methanol, it is good solvent for some solute, bad solvent for others. Similarly, this eutectic liquid is good solvent for some compound and bad solvent for other compound. In this way, it has been proved that this eutectic liquid is a solvent. And once it has proved that it is a solvent, means whatever it contains must possess solvabilizing power. So, what does it contain? Methymol solid and menthol in liquid state, of course. The molecules are in liquid state. So, this means thymol molecules, menthol molecules must possess solubilizing power. That's why you are having good solubility of some of the compound. Suppose there was no solubilizing power in these two solids, all materials must have come in this column, left and right hand column. Like this. Okay. So, these are the proof. Now, coming to hydrotropy directly. Uh, I have told you that uh, as soon as some doubt comes to your mind, please note, note down your questions at the end of the lecture. We have question answer session. Now, coming to hydrotropic solubilization. Hydrotropic solubilization is about 100 years old concept, one, and more than 100 years old concept it is. But I have applied uh, hydrotropic solutions as solvent system to replace harmful organic solvent. So, before understanding the utilization of Green chemistry using hydrotropic solution. First, you should learn what is hydrotropic solubilization. Firstly, I will give some example. Then, uh, I will give the uh, uh, 
its applications eco friendly applications okay green chemistry application well, you see that solubility of dichromic sodium in water is about 1.6 percent at room temperature dichromic solubility dichromic sodium solubility in water 1.6 percent weight by volume in water at room temperature if you employ 60 percent 60 60 percent weight by volume solution of the urea in water if you change the solubility of dichromic sodium in this solution the solubility is about 4.8 percent weight by volume 4.8 percent so 4.8 divided by 1.6 about three fold enhancement in solubility there in which in the urea solution concentrate what is the reason for solubility enhancement the molecules of urea are available in liquid state and these molecules are involved in hydrogen bonding and with one of our forces the molecules of uh, your this uh, dichromic sodium that's why you get a large solubility of uh, this uh, dichromic sodium in uh, concentrated solution of urea so this is one example of hydrotropic solubilization okay now here urea is a hydrotropic agent another example the solubility of salicylic acid salicylic acid in water is very poor about 0.3 percent weight by volume about 0.3 percent weight by volume but if you change the solubility of salicylic acid in 45 percent weight by volume solution of sodium citrate in water 45 percent weight by volume solution of sodium citrate in water the solubility of salicylic acid is more than 15 one five more than 15 percent okay what is the reason again here the molecules of sodium citrate are available in liquid state for hydrogen bonding and peak one forces with the molecules of salicylic acid that's why there is a large solubility of salicylic acid in concentrated solution of sodium citrate here sodium citrate is again a hydrotropic agent okay now if we imply 30 percent weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate in water 30 percent this sodium benzoate solution, concentrated solution, increases the solubility of several poorly water soluble drugs like ketopropane, flurvipropane, naproxen, ibuprofen, atenodol, gatifloxacin, tenodazole, metronidazole, nerodic acid, and so on and so forth. These all are the example. Here, sodium benzoate is also a hydrotropic agent, and the, uh, here, these all are the examples of hydrotropic solubilization. And this year on your screen, on your slide, you will see these are the sum of the hydrotropic agents. Okay. Now the definition of hydrotropic solubilization. I always used uh, concentrated solution. Sometimes I told you 60% with by volume urea solution. Sometimes I told you 45% sodium citrate solution in water. Sometimes I told you 30% sodium benzoate solution in salt of food. Always I talked about the concentrated solution. Now the definition of hydrotropic solubilization. Then there is enhancement in uh, one more thing. Hydrotropic solubilization. Hydro means water. So this solubility relates with solubility enhancement in aqueous solution in water. Hydro water. Okay. Now the definition. Then there is enhancement in aqueous solubility of a poorly water soluble drug. In the presence of a large concentration of an agent, then we call this phenomena to be hydrotropic solubilization phenomena. Again, I am repeating when there is enhancement in number one, aqueous solubility of a poorly water soluble drug in the presence of a large concentration of an agent, then we call this phenomena to be hydrotropic solubilization phenomena. Okay, now coming to the you uh, now some uh, uh, one more thing if some students or teachers or researchers if they are interested to get this powerpoint presentation they can write me they can ask me i can send it to you because uh, in uh, a small time i cannot show all the examples here so here uh, if you see this uh, ibuprofen in crystal water solvent is 0 0.028 percent ibuprofen solvent in two molar sodium benzoate solution is 2.390 percent about 85 fold solubility enhancement is there what is this solubility enhancement ratio solubility in the hydrotropic solution divided by solubility in water so this is solubility enhancement ratio okay now if you see in the last aspirin solubility in water 0.131 percent 
एक्सपीरियंस सॉल्युबिलिटी इन फोर मोलर सोडियम एसिटेट सॉल्यूशन 7.409% एक्सपीरियंस सॉल्युबिलिटी इन 1.25 मोलर सोडियम साइट 4.728% एक्सपीरियंस सॉल्युबिलिटी इन 2 मोलर सोडियम में जो है 3.151% लाइक दिस सो दिस यू विल गेट ए लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एग्जांपल्स हियर नाउ कमिंग टू द यूज ऑफ हाइड्रोप्रोपी एस सॉल्वेंट सिस्टम हाइड्रोट्रोपिक सॉल्यूशन एस सॉल्वेंट सिस्टम टू रिप्लेस harmful organic solvent so number 1 we will discuss eco friendly psychrometric analysis of poorly water soluble drugs using hydrotropic solution without using organic solvent now we see example assay of two semite ecto pharmaceutical ingredient api ip 2018 method ip and bp they are same method Now we are way accurately about 0.5 gram per semi API. Dissolve in 40 ml of dimethyl formamide. It is a class two organic solvent. Titrate with uh, 0.1 molar NaOH solution using bromothymol value solution as indicator. Carry out the blank determination. How this blank determination is carried out? First, you understand this thing. What you are doing? You are dissolving a drug, 0.5 gram, in 40 ml of dimethyl formamide. Then you are adding few drops of bromothymol value solution indicator, and you are titrating with 0.1 molar NaOH solution. As soon as end point comes, you have to note down the volume of NaOH solution. Suppose that volume is x1 ml of 0.1 molar NaOH solution. X1 ml. Okay. Now. We have to carry out a blank determination. We will take a neat and clean another conical flask. In that flask, you will uh, keep 40 ml of dimethyl formamide, few drops of bromothymol value solution indicator. Then you will run 0.1 molar NaOH solution for color change. Suppose color change takes 0.1 ml of NaOH solution, 0.1 ml. So by means, of course, it is a one ml or half ml, or like a very few ml. They are involved in this. Uh, uh, this is known as uh, neutralization of the solvent because uh, this y one ml of uh, NaOH anyway, has been consumed by our solvent system, part ml of the entire formula. So this has been taken here also together with the drug, drug plus DML. Here only DML. So this value means y1 will be subtracted from x1. So x1 minus y1, this much volume of NaOH has been consumed by our drug. So this is known as blank determination, blank correction. Okay, now x1 minus y1 ml using this factor, 1 ml of 0.1 molar NaOH is equal to 33.07 mg of glutamate in this factor you can find out the purity of your glutamate api now what what is this pharmacological method it is in uh, it is involving the use of a class 2 organic solvent dimethyl formamide okay why they are not using uh, ethanol you see Glutamate is purely water soluble drug, so water cannot be implied for its dissolution, for its titrometric analysis. No, water cannot be implied. Then, relatively safer is ethanol, class three organic solvent. It is relatively safer, but ethanol could not be implied in glutamate estimation. The reason is because the solubility of glutamate in ethanol is weak, poor, sparingly soluble, 1.7%. So ethanol could not be implied otherwise. Ethanol is a better. Uh, ethanol is better in, in, as far as the injurious effect is concerned. It is better than dimethyl formamide. This is class three. Ethanol is class three. Dimethyl formamide is class two. Class two organic solvent they are more harmful than class three organic solvent. So ethanol is relatively safer than class two organic solvent. But ethanol could not be implied due to problem of solubility. Okay, uh, so they have implied dimethyl formamide. Now here I would like to explain one thing that this class three organic solvent, which could not be implied due to limited solubility of glutamate, uh, you can potentiate the solvent power of this ethanol to act as class two organic solvent. So 
आई हैव यूज 15 I employed 40 ml of this ethanolic solution of niacinamide to dissolve a bulk drug, then titration with NOH in presence of bromothymol value indicator, blank run, and then the same means uh, after blank correction, you, you get the same results. What I have done now, I am here, I am giving one method by which you can potentiate the solvent power of a Class 3 are solvent to actress, class 2 are solvent. Please listen me again. So, ethanol, which is a class 3 are solvent, the solvent power has been improved due to solubilizing power of a safe solid niacinamide. And you can uh, perform the stoichiometric analysis here itself without the involvement of dimethyl formamide. So, in this way, a class 3 are solvent has been. Uh, it means the solvent power of class 3 organic solvent has been improved to act as class 2 organic solvent. This is one method. I told you that I will tell you how can you potentiate the solvent power of uh, a class 3 organic solvent to act as class 2 or class 1 organic solvent so that their detrimental effect of class 2 or class 1 organic solvent can be minimized. This is one way. Another method I will. Uh, discuss in case of extraction. Okay, so this was ethanol, use of ethanol after potentiating its solvent power by sinusinol. But it's still better method I am telling to you hydrotropy. This trusamide uh, can be estimated by hydrotropic solutions as solvent system. Now, how it can be done? We accurately about 0.5 gram trusamide API. Dissolving in 40 ml of 30% wet by volume sodium and your solution. Just if you shake it, you will get a clear solution. You add pro few drops of bromothymol value indicator and then you will dry it with 0.1 molar in your solution. As soon as end point comes, you have to note down the reading. Suppose that reading is X2 ml of NOH solution. X2 ml of NOH solution. Okay. Now you will have to carry out a blank determination. So you will take a neat and clean uh, conical flask, you will take 40 ml of sodium in your solution, 30% good by volume, few drops of uh, bromothymol value indicator and then titration with 0.1 molar. Anyway, suppose Y2 ml of NOH solution, means it is very few ml of this NOH solution. So Y2 ml of NOH has been consumed uh, for by your sodium in your solution. So this will be subtracted from X2. So X2 minus Y2, this much volume of NOH has been implied for your drug. Using the same factor of pharmacopoeia, 1 ml of 0.1 molar NOH is equivalent to 33.07 mg of glutamide in the mind of the perfected. Now again listen me carefully. What you have done here, in place of a class 2 organic solvent dimethyl formide, you have implied 30% weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate hydrotropic solution to act as solvent. Okay, and the same result means 100% with 100% accuracy, you can perform the psychometric analysis. So in this way, uh, you have replaced dimethyl formide by a safe sodium benzoate solution, safe and economic. The cost of 30% sodium benzoate solution in water is about rupees 40 per liter, rupees 40 per liter. But the cost of DMF, chloroform, methanol, methanol, etc., is about 200 rupees per liter, 300 rupees per liter, and so on and so forth. In this way, you see this is a green chemistry method. Without the use of any harmful organic solvent, you are able to perform the psychometric analysis. So, uh, this is green chemistry, okay? Now, similarly, uh, and now, in brief, I will tell you all these things. Assay of chloroformin API, I will make that. Here, there is involvement of ethanol for dissolution, ethanol, class 3. Now, this ethanol class 3 has been replaced by sodium benzoate solution. In the same way, as I discussed for Fusamide, naproxen API, IP metric analysis, IPBP method, involves the use of methanol 
a class 2 RNA solvent. This class 2 methanol has been replaced by sodium benzoate solution. Okay. Now these two two methods I have shown in front of uh, this uh, in uh, they are in, in uh, uh, Greater Noida. You are in Greater Noida uh, in Gaziabad. IPC uh, offices uh, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission is there. I have gone there four times. One time I uh, I uh, I have shown these results in front of their analyst. Their analyst uh, analyzed a nephroxin and glucosamide sample in front of me. I was there. Okay, they have compared with the pharmacopoeia method. They were same. Me, I'm just. I'm trying that uh, such types of methods should be uh, uh, should, should be incorporated in the pharmacopoeia so that uh, the persons uh, of the different laboratories they can utilize the, uh, the sodium benzoate solution in place of methanformide or in place uh, in place of methanol, etc. So to some extent, we can prevent the human being against the harmful effects of vapors of or this harmful organic solvent. Anyway, I am trying that some of the methods should come in pharmacopoeia. Okay. Now, in the case of salicylic acid, API, IP method, it involves ethanol. Okay, for dissolution. Now, that can be, uh, ethanol can be replaced by sodium citrate solution, uh, hydrotropic solution. Ketoprofen involves the use of ethanol. Okay, uh, in IPBP method. Ethanol has been replaced by sodium benzoate solution. Ibuprofen API involves the use of ethanol for the dissolution. Ethanol has been replaced by uh, sodium benzoate solution in the usual manner. Now, ibuprofen tablet. Just briefly, I will discuss uh, in brief. Uh, there is involvement of two organic solvent in the estimation of or uh, assay of ibuprofen tablet, IPBP method. Now, this method weigh and powder 20 tablets. We accurately the powder equivalent to 0.5 gram of ibuprofen, extraction with chloroform and evaporation of chloroform in air current, dissolve the residue in 100 ml of ethanol, titrate with 0.1 molar annual solution using phenolphthalein as indicator, carry out the product determination, each ml of 0.1 molar annual is equivalent to 0 0.02063 gram of ibuprofen. So, this is the method of IBBP. Which involves two organic solvent chloroform, class two organic solvent, and ethanol class three organic solvent. Now, all, both these organic solvents they have been replaced by sodium benzoate solution. What you have to do in this great chemistry method or eco friendly method? Weigh the tablet powder equivalent to 0 0.5 gram ibuprofen. Shake briskly for 10 minutes with 100 ml of 30 percent sodium benzoate solution. So during this 10 minutes shaking, the ibuprofen present in the tablet powder is dissolved by sodium benzoate solution, by hydrotropic solubilization, whatever you say. Titrate with 0.1 molar annual solution using phenolphthalein solution as indicator. Then blank determination using 100 ml of 30% weight by volume sodium benzoate solution. 1 ml of 0.1 molar annual is equivalent to this much of ibuprofen using this factor you can find out the treatment. What you have done in this hydrotropic method, you are using only the sodium benzoate solution, which is safe and economic. I told you the cost of 30% weight by volume solution of sodium benzoate in water is about rupees 40 per liter. Okay, but the cost of load form, etc., etc., is about 200, 300 rupees per liter in so on so forth. So, just by without any organic solution, without ethanol, without, without load form, we are able to perform. The ibuprofen every time is by titrated method. Other drugs which uh, uh, can be uh, titrated uh, using this uh, eco friendly method, ethylvanilin involves use of DMF. This DMF can be replaced by hydrotropic solution. Endomethyl and acetone require. Acetone can be replaced. Uh, Glibin chlamide, ethanol is involved. Ethanol can be replaced. Glutrophomide, ethanol can be replaced by other hydrotropic solution. Methinamic acid, ethanol can be replaced by hydrotropic method. Now, after uh, titrimetric analysis, the use of hydrotropic solubilization in UV analysis. So, UV spectrophotometric estimations of pharmaceutical doses forms of poorly water soluble drug using hydrotropic solution without any organic solvent. Means without any organic solvent, you can perform the UV spectrophotometric analysis of poorly water soluble drug. 
For example, here the example is set up in the new tablet IPPP method, weight tablet powder equivalent to 0.15 gram of tendrazole. Take 20 ml of methanol and you shake it. So during this shaking, methanol dissolves tendrazole, which is present in the tablet powder. Then volume is made up to the mark, up to 100 ml mark of methanol. Okay. Filtration is done to remove insoluble excipients. Then 10 ml of the filtrate is diluted up to 100 ml with methanol. Then again you take 10 ml from this solution and dilute it up to 100 ml with methanol. Then the absorbance of this solution is noted against methanol reagent blend. Means in the reference cover you put methanol and in the sample cover you put the sample solution. Then you find out its absorbance at 310 nm, 310 nm. Okay, and absorbance is noted. Calculate the content of tendazole taking 356 as the specific absorbance at 310 nm. Using this E1% one centimeter value, you can find out the drug content of your tablet. Okay, now one thing you will have to mind uh, to keep in your mind that methanol, in methanol solvent, the peak of tendazole comes at 310 nm. Now, we can replace this methanol by sodium azote solution. How? This is eco friendly method, or I mean, this is the hydrotopic method. We tablet powder equivalent to 50 milligram of tendrazole, add 20 ml of 30% weight by volume so eco solution of sodium azote and sink for 10 minutes in 825 ml volumetric cloth. This is what you have done. You have taken a 25 ml volumetric cloth. You have transferred tablet powder containing about, point, uh, about 50 mg of tendrazole, then 20 ml of 30% sodium azote solution, hydrotopic solution, shaking for 10 minutes briskly. During this shaking, sodium azote dissolves tendrazole present in the tablet powder. Then, up to the mark 25 ml, you have to dilute with water. Previously, you have taken 20 ml of sodium azote solution. Further dilution with water, not with sodium manure solution, with water dilution up to the mark, then filtration to remove insoluble excipient. Then 1 ml of filtrate is diluted up to 100 ml with water. Okay, then measure the absorbance of this solution at 318 ml against reagent bedding. In water, in aqueous solution, the peak of tendrazole comes at 318 ml. In methanol, 310 nm. In water, 318 nm. Number one. So you have noted its absorbance, keeping reagent blank in the reference cover. What is the reagent blank? How the students can make this reagent blank? I will tell you. For making reagent blank, you will have to take a 25 ml volumetric flask, 20 ml of sodium azote solution, 30 percent. Further dilution up to the mark with water. 1 ml of this solution will be diluted up to 100 ml with water. So, this is the reagent blend solution. This solution, reagent blend solution, contains same concentration of sodium benzoate, which is present together with the drug in your sample solution. So, sample solution is put in the sample cover. The reference means reagent blend is put in the reference cover. Now, both covers contain same concentration of sodium benzoate, so there is neutralization of the effect, okay, and then absorbance is noted at 318 nm, which is due to your drug only, okay. Now, one thing you should mind it well, that sodium benzoate does not interfere above 292 nm. Sodium benzoate does not interfere above 292 nm. That's why there is no interference in UV estimation of tenderazole at 318, 318 nm. No interference there. Similarly, another hydrotopic is in sodium. Uh, this neosinoid is also implied for uh, UV analysis. Neosinoid also does not interfere above 292 nm. So, above means uh, in my research paper, I told mostly that. Uh, Above 300 nm, if your peak of drug is there, you can utilize for a metal Anyway, now main thing is uh, what, uh, up to this time, you have measured the absorbance only. Now, how to calculate the drug content? Now, the so last 
paragraph calculate the content from the absorbance obtained by repeating the whole procedure using 50 mg tetrajoule rs in place of every powder means now you will have to apply a standard sample of tetrajoule containing no amount of drug say for example if you have uh, got gift sample of tetrajoule from some company and uh, on the label of that drug it is written that it this contains 99.19% of tetrajoule so this is known as a reference substance so based on this drug content you will have to take 50 mg of tetrajoule and to perform in the same way 20 ml 30 ml so the major solution was made with water for 1 ml diluted to 100 like this so in this way you will have to compare the two absorbances and by comparison of these two absorbances the drug content can be calculated out this is one method another method may be that you can make it sir can we sir curve how the calculation in curve can be made you will even make 5 10 15 20 25 mg per ml solutions the same respect for reagents will be there 5 mg mg per ml 5 just the respect for reagent reagent per ml 10 mg per ml respect for reagent per ml keeping in this way you can note down the absorbances and you can plot it in the curve and this regression equation y equal to this much x plus y like that you can uh, utilize for the analysis of the tablet the beauty of this method is you are not using methanol you are using only sodium benzoate solution which is cheap economic as well as it is safe and in this way you uh, you can replace class 2 methanol by use of a hydrotropic acid now in the same way naproxen tablets ipbp method involves methanol but eco friendly method sodium benzoate can be used naproxen is estimated at about 331 nm 331 nm no interference of sodium benzoate here indomethacin 320 nm no interference of sodium benzoate methanol has been replaced Dijepam capsule methanol has been replaced by uh, mixed hydrotropy. Uh, okay, uh, this is estimated at 354 nm. Now, pharmacopoeic method for atenolol tablets and dipropyl sodium is based on UV spectrophotometry estimation using methanol. This methanol has been nicely replaced by urea solution. Atenolol tablet methanol is used in IPPP method. Urea can be used. to estimate this adrenaline line at 275 nm the urea does not interfere above 240 nm 240 nm above urea does not interfere so in case of adrenaline 275 nm p this can be used uh, to replace methanol in case of dipropyl sodium uh, this uh, urea solution can replace methanol Here estimation is done at 276 nm. Here urea does not interfere. I told you that urea does not interfere above 240 240 nm, and you have to estimate dipropyl sodium at 276 nm. So no interference. So in this way, harmful organic solvent like methanol class 2 can be replaced by safe hydrotropic solution, urea solution like that. Identification test I am leaving. Now after this PLT. Thin layer chromatography can be uh, carried out using hydrotropic solutions. So I will mention one uh, published paper. Uh, this reference is there. Those who need all these things, they can ask my PowerPoint presentation. I can send it to you. So this is the reference. Uh, means uh, it is available online. Now what has been done here? In this particular uh, pro, uh, published paper. Nine water soluble drugs were selected. Number one, propylenol hydrochloride was selected. Six, propylenol hydrochloride, vitamin B6, hydrochloride, lidocaine hydrochloride, vitamin B1 hydrochloride, metformin hydrochloride. Nine, nine water soluble drugs they were done. Uh, they were selected for this uh, TLC study for making the spot on TLC plate of silica gel G. Silica gel G was implied. Silica gel G plate. Its spot was using capillary 
two percent effort solutions were used. Two percent weight by volume solutions have been dragged individually. They were used for making this water uh, tail plate. Then the uh, water was removed by heating. Of course, uh, you will have to ever uh, dry this uh, uh, this part before its development. Then uh, what you have what has been implied as a mobile phase no organic solvent. Now you see blend of mason. Eight blends were used by the students and for students who have carried out this work. Blend one was containing 5% sodium benzoate and 5% sodium acetate in water. So total became 10% dissolved solid. Blend two, 5% sodium benzoate plus 5% niacinamide. Blend three, 5% sodium benzoate plus 5% sodium citrate. Blend four was only single hydrotropic solutions, 10% weight by value for a solution like this. So these were seven blends. Now eighth blend was, as you are seeing on the top here, blend 7.5% niacinamide and 7.5% sodium benzoate, total 15%. So all eight blends were employed for each drug. Nine drug multiplied by eight blends. No matter what, 72 times uh, TLC was performed. And how the export was, right? of course, after development of the plates, uh, plates were kept for drying uh, at high temperature, means uh, at about 100 degrees centigrade to remove water. Then the export was identified with the help of iodine chamber, and these RF values were calculated. I told students to select only those mobile phases which gave a clear export without tailing effect. Clear means without tailing effect. So out of those, they have been selected. For example, out of eight blades, only one blade was good for hydrochloride. That was 7.5% nesamide and 7.5% sodium medium. In case of guaifenesin, out of eight blades, only blade one, two, three, four, and seven, they were found good without tailing effect. In case of ciprofloxacin, only one, dead okay, one, two, three, like this. So in this way, you are seeing, uh, that without the use of any organic solvent, you are able to perform that thin layer chromatography. Now you listen one word from me. Um, not one word, of course, once and I will say. Before that, of course, you see this your slide. Uh, otherwise, in usual TLC methods, always organic solvents, one or more than one organic solvent, they are involved in tail, uh, for carrying uh, to carry out the TLC, for example. You see, these are the IQ methods for five drugs, as you are seeing on your screen. Ciprofloxacin and hydrochloride IP method involves the use of dichloromethane, methanol, uh, and acetonitrol. Guaifenesin involves the use of carbon tetrachloride and ethanol. Ciprofloxacin citrate, acetone, and nitrate. So, uh, uh, now you listen one sentence from me that for each and every compound, whether a compound is water soluble, whether a compound is water insoluble. For each and every compound, thin layer chromatography is possible with the use of hydrotropic solutions, mixed hydrotropic solutions, or mixed solvents there, without the use of any organic solvent. Again, I am repeating the sentence. For thin layer chromatography of each and every compound, hydrotropic solutions, mixed hydrotropic solutions, or mixed solvent system can be employed to carry out the TLC without the use of any organic and of course, at the end of the lecture, I will go some information uh, of uh, YouTube. I made uh, seven YouTube uh, videos which are available online. Okay, out of that one view discusses this about the TLC. So that information I will do at the end of the lecture. So that video can also be observed by you uh, in your free time. Each video is of about 40 to 45 minutes duration. Okay. Now, after the TLC, coming to reverse phase HPLC. Now, this work was done by Remy Madam, uh, who is uh, assistant professor in Kerala University, Remy SL Madam. She is doing PhD on hydrotopic analysis, UV analysis, and HPLC analysis. She has carried out this work. What she has done here in this particular work, she has implied sepixim tablets, means analysis of sepixim tablet with the help of uh, hydrotopic solution. C has employed 6% uh, bit by volume echo solution of sodium acetate as hydrotropic solution after adjusting its pH to 6.2 with the help of acetic acid. 
So this solution was used as mobile field. This solution was not having any organic solvent, only a cross solution of sodium acetate. Okay, so this was used as mobile field, no epicronal trial, no methanol, no any organic solvent. Like this. So this was implied as mobile field. Okay, so this published paper, this one, the complete reference is there. You can see it is available online. Now, some uh, drawbacks of this uh, paper were there, I mean, some very decent parameters they were lacking in this particular research. But now, this second paper of Remy Vega, in which she has analyzed tablets containing two drugs, paracetamol and diclofenac sodium simultaneously. So these two drugs are present the tablet. These tablets were analyzed by reverse injection by Remy Meda using uh, using five percent urea solution as uh, uh, mobile phase. Five percent echo solution of urea as mobile phase. She has carried out this work. Published paper reference is there. This in this paper she has utilized a large number of very decent parameter. This paper is very good. Means uh, better than previous paper like this. So in this way, what you are seeing. That without the use of organic solvent, you are able to perform the reverse phase HPLC of the compound. Now, one sentence you will listen from me now. For all water soluble compounds, for all water soluble compounds, reverse phase HPLC is possible with the use of hydrotropic solution, mixed hydrotropic solution, or mixed solvent uh, system. I did not include the word water in solvent. No, not for what is I. I uh, uh, you uh, keep them aside. Water and solvent drug. Okay, there are limitations for water and solvent drug. But for all water solvent compounds, reverse phase HPLC is possible with the use of hydrotropic solutions or mixed hydrotropic solutions or mixed solvent system without the use of any organic solvent. Okay, so anyone can perform these types of estimations. Now coming to the mixed hydrotropic solubilization. Now I told you that hydrotropic solubilization is about 100 years old concept. No one has implied mixed hydrotropic before 2008. In 2008, we have started mixed hydrotropic solubilization. And this mixed hydrotropic, the beauty of this mixed hydrotropic is that you can make your pharmaceutical doses forms using mixed hydrotropy. The products can be marketed otherwise using the simple single hydrotropic solutions. A large concentration is implied, so uh, uh, formulations can uh, hardly be, uh, they cannot be, you may say, uh, marketed. Okay, now I will give the example first. You see, suppose uh, your uh, sol solubility of your poorly water solute is enhanced by 30 percent. Uh, with by volume solution of sodium benzene, and you are making this intramuscular injection. This intramuscular injection cannot be marketed because the concentration of sodium benzene employed is uh, exceeding the limit which is given in in, in actual ingredient guide. Now you see, firstly you see that particular this one. Uh, actually, first you see this slide. What is this slide? This slide gives the in actual ingredient guide. This is has been selected from. There means these are the additive concentration. Which can be implied in intramuscular injection as per inactive ingredient guide book 2020. Actually, this is the book which gives the concentrations of inactive ingredient which can be implied in the formulation. So, this small list I have taken from this particular book, which is followed by the uh, manufacturer, pharmaceutical manufacturer. So, particularly for aqueous intramuscular injections, these are the additives or excipient which can be employed safely. Safely means without their toxic effect. Okay. Now you see this number two is sodium citrate, 10%. Means up to 10% sodium citrate can nicely be employed in intramuscular aqueous injections of drugs. Now you see uh, number eight, sodium acetate, 10%. Can be implied in intramuscular injection. Number 13, sodium benzoate 10% can be implied in intramuscular injection. You cannot imply more than 10% sodium benzoate solution in your intramuscular injection. If you are making your formulation using 15, 20, or 25, or 30% sodium benzoate solution, they cannot be marketed because you are, you are exceeding the limit. Okay, now mixed hydrotropy can solve the problem and this can be used to make the marketable formulations for example
Suppose you have got insoluble drug, what insoluble drugs you have to make it. They are intramuscular aqueous injections in the form of solutions. So what should you do? You should imply mixed hydrotropy. For example, if, as from this list, number two, sodium citrate 10% is safe, number one. Number eight, sodium acetate 10% is safe, number three. And number 13, sodium induate 10% is safe. Total became 30%. So this is mixed hydrotropic solution of 30% beta by volume strength. If your drug has got good solubility in this 30%, three uh, hydrotropic agent solution, and it, the solubility is uh, achieved to the desired level, and intramuscular injections can be formulated, which can be marketed. Of course, after making them in chemical stability studies, toxicological studies, definitely you will have to perform, but definitely you will find them to be non toxic because you have implied these three hydrotropic agents in a safe concentration. So, anyway, by altering the proportions of these hydrotropic agents, you can uh, have different mixed hydrotropic solution system and the solubility of drugs cell can be enhanced by use of mixed hydrotropy and to form the foundation uh, and these formulations can be marketed. So this is the uh, utility of mixed hydrotropy. So this I have started in the year 2008 and this is the first project uh, conducted here in our laboratory by Yede Jarwani in the 2000 year 8, in the year 2008. Okay, now I am, I am giving some brief, uh, the, some results uh, about the findings by the city is uh, He has reported the solubility of fluidified and water 0.008%. In 40% urea solution, the solubility was 0.191%. 40% sodium acetate solution, 0.239%. 40% sodium acetate solution, 2.157. 40% sodium citrate, 0.129%. So these are the solubilities reported by Ite Zirwani uh, using single hydrotropy. 40% was kept constant for all the hydrotropic grains. Then I told him to make different blends, make hydrotropic blends containing different ratios of these four hydrotropic agents. So he has checked the solubility different. About 15 to 20 blends were made of mixed hydrotropic uh, combinations. Okay, and the solubilities were um, uh, determined. Now uh, Three results, three, uh, the results of three blends I am giving to you uh, because in these three there was very good solubility achievement. Uh, but there, number six, uh, as you are seeing on your screen, 15% sodium enjoyed, 5% sodium acetate, 5% sodium citrate, 15% urea. Total became 20, uh, 40%. Okay, mixed hydrotropic solution, 40% is same. Here the solubility found was 4.248%, 4.247%. Okay, now if you see the solubility by urea 0.191, sodium acetate 0.239, 40% sodium benzoate 2.157%, 40% sodium citrate 0.129%. So this solubility is nearly double than that of sodium benzoate solu solubility, which was highest out of those four. So uh, here you may say this, this is synergistic solvent solubilization, synergistic solubility enhancement using mixed hydrotropy. Similarly, in case of saving, there was synergistic solubility enhancement in eight also. So, using mixed hydrotropy, you can have additive solvent character, you can have synergistic solvent action, and the mixed hydrotropic solubilization can be implied for making for a marketable formulation. Otherwise, uh, you see a lot of work has been done on single hydrotropy. So many persons they have made injections, etc., but their injections could not be marketed part. Using mixed hydrotropic solubilization, uh, marketable formulations can be made. I would like to mention one thing to you uh, for information. In Egypt, there is one scientist, Dr. Hossein, who is still doing work on mixed hydrotropy to make marketable formulations in Egypt. Okay. Now, coming to second parameter of mixed solvency concept. Now, what is that? I told you number one concept, uh, one uh, first parameter was each and everything present in this universe has got solubilizing power. This means everything is a solubilizer. Whatever the name of any solubilizer is, that solubilizer possesses good solubilizing power for some solute, bad for others. So all are solubilizer. So therefore, as far as the formulation point of view is concerned, you can imply uh, 
the additives for their solubilizing power. Additives, the so-called excipients, because since each and everything possesses good solubilizing, means possesses solubilizing power, so your excipients can also be applied in your formulations for their solubility enhancement effect like this. So this is the second parameter that you make a concentrated solution using the safe use of uh, you will say the additives and then you check the solubility of your full liver solute drug and when you find good solubility you can uh, utilize that for making its formulation. Now here one example I would like to mention here uh, I have made this blend with uh, mixed solvent system containing two uh, uh, solids uh, sodium azote 5 percent, sodium cathrinate 5 percent, sodium citrate 5 percent, blood to 75 total became for 20 percent strength solution in water pH was neutral, 7. Now the solubility of several drugs was changed in this particular blend. And uh, in, in, in nearly in all the blends, the solubility of drugs, nearly uh, the solubility of all the drugs was enhanced in this particular solution. I gave the example of only two. Number one is crucified solubility, 35 mg per ml in this particular blend, 35 mg per ml. Otherwise, in water, its solubility is less than 1 mg per ml. So at least 35 fold solubility enhancement is there. Why? Because the molecules of all these four solids, sodium benzoate, sodium capronate, sodium citrate, and cooloxama, they are in liquid state. And these molecules can also be involved in hydrogen bonding and weak one forces with the molecules of these uh, solutes. Okay. Second example is that of pyroxicam. The solubility of pyroxicam uh, in water is less than 1 mg per ml, but in this particular blend, the solvent is 20 mg per ml. Okay, so in this way, mixed solvency concept can be employed to increase the drug loading in your formulation. For example, you now you see the application of mixed solvency concept. Dry powder injection for reconstitution of poorly water soluble drug in a certain select setting. Now, published paper references before you on your slide at the bottom. Okay, what has been done here? Uh, the student, M. Parak student, has employed. Candy Sertan selected poorly water solubility drug. Its solubility was enhanced by sodium caprylate solid, sodium benzoate solid, and sodium acetate solid. So, in while he has kept dose, 8 mg dose of Candy Sertan selected in while, 100 mg sodium caprylate, 50 mg sodium benzoate, 50 mg sodium acetate. When 1 ml water is added and reconstituted, you get a clear solution. So, okay, so in this way, uh, dry powder injection for reconstitution of poorly water solute drugs, they can be developed. Particularly, this is very useful when your red made injection aqueous, in aqueous solution or suspension, they are unstable due to hydrolyzability of your compound. What can be done in this way? Solid, now you know that solids also possess solubilizing power. So, solid type of excipient can be employed to increase the solubility and now all these solids are present in uh, solid state of course so, so the expiry period is one and a half year two years and so on so forth at the time of need water fermentation will be added the constitution you will get clear solution that will be injected like so very good uh, topic can be chosen by m for pharmaceutics students and of course such type of work is patentable also solid dispersants can be made with the help of mixed solvency concept in this particular example, uh, within uh, five ten minutes, I will uh, nearly within ten minutes I will stop my lecture. So, in solid dispersion, tosamide drug, insoluble drug, two point five gram. It was dissolved with the help of sodium citrate, one point two five gram, sodium acetate, one point two five gram, which is like two point five gram, sodium capillary five gram. Published paper references before you. Okay, so after dissolution of these additives, then tosamide was dissolved, water was evaporated out. It was dry, uh, it was uh, uh, separate to fine see, so you get a solid person and there is fast dissolution of the drug like this. So, full, uh, this. of course, those who need the soft copy of M farm thesis, I can send the soft copy of thesis also for you if you uh, are interested to carry out such type of work. Liquid solid systems can be developed with the help of mixed elements concept. Uh, now here the example is of course M4 project work is there at the bottom you will see the re complete reference it, the published paper reference is there it is available online now here in this particular example uh, pyroxicum drug was selected as model drug propylene glycol there was poor solubility of this drug less than 5 mg per ml you cannot make it 
solid system. But when you increase the drug loading using two solid, 10% sodium cyclohexanoate and propylene glycol, 10% sodium acetate and propylene glycol. It is equal to 20% is the solid. Uh, there's a dissolved concentration of these two solid. And now the solubility of your final oxygen drug was about 120 milligram per ml. So in this way, my student was able to make it's a liquid solid system for its resolution. So please see the published paper. It is available online. Like aqueous injection, they can be made. Foundation of uh, development of dry powder injection for the constitution of the water solution drug. This is another uh, paper on dry powder injection. Okay, this can also be observed by you. Mixed solvency concept can be used to make innumerable safe solvent system. This is very important to understand. Now you see, again, I would like to draw your attention on this particular slide. Again, this is the same slide which I explained in the case of mixed habit of solubilization. Uh, again, you listen, these attitudes are employed safely in these concentrations as per inactive ingredient guide 2020 for the development of aqueous and muscular injections. Now, I, I would like to uh, say, how can you make innumerable safe solvent system for your only water solvent drug? You see, up to this time, the pharmaceutical manufacturers, they have safe solvent system, water, ethanol, uh, propylene glycol, glycerin, PG 400, 500, etc. Sometimes they mix a twin, sometimes cyclodexin, two, three, four. When they, they are handicapped for solvent enhancement, I can give a method for them to have innumerable safe solvent system using mixed solvency concept. In mixed solvency concept, as you know, that each and everything has got solvenizing power. So particularly for making the pharmaceutical formulations, what you have to do, you have to utilize the solubilizing power of additives. Now uh, I will tell you how can you make innumerable safe solvent system. So particularly I will discuss uh, for aqueous intramuscular injection. For aqueous intramuscular injection, these are the additives in these concentrations, they can be applied safely, which without their toxic effect. Number so suppose you select first three ethanol alcohol 10%, sodium citrate 10%, arginine 10%. You see first one, two, three. So there's a 30% solution is there. Now this is one blend. Now another blend can be made if you re replace arginine by histidine. So another blend is ready. So in this way, by permutation combination, just by use of this small uh, Table, you can make innumerable safe solvent system because as many as solvent system you will develop, they will have different solubilizing power for your drug. So, in this way, innumerable safe solvent system can be developed for intramuscular injection uh, formulations like this. Now, coming to uh, other uses of uh, solvent system, the designer can be developed. Increasing the drug loading, you can reduce the size of the film. You, you will see this particular project for that. Improvement of drug loading in ACDDS, with solvency concept, drug loading can be improved, reducing the surfactant concentration to surfactant concentration. See the published paper. Improvement of drug loading in oral film using mixed solvency concept. Just by increasing the drug loading, the size of them can be reduced. Then you have this uh, mix and match is for, for dissolving oral film, this is another work. Public paper reference is there. Uh, now I would like to give attention on this uh, particular uh, for extraction. Then I will finish my lecture. Okay. So uh, this is also very, but uh, I will dis uh, discuss very briefly this one. What we have done here, and MPARP students have done this project work. And of course, it has been applied for the Indian patent also. Okay, so it is under process. This patent is under process. Okay, now this is the reference given on your on this slide. This paper is available online. What has been done here? I want to demonstrate to the world that the solids can also be applied for uh, extraction of constituent from herbal powder for. Uh, model active ingredient we have selected sesame oil. Sesame oil is present in sesame feed powder. Sesame uh, oil solubility was checked in different solvent systems like melted thymol. Thymol melting point about 50 degrees centigrade. 
one gram thymol in your test tube, water bath, it's melting at about 50 degrees centigrade. So one gram melted clear colorless liquid, 0.1 ml sesam oil, it is also nicely 0.1 ml in this way. It was found that more than one ml of sesam oil is nicely dissolved by one gram melted thymol liquid. So melted thymol liquid is very good solvent for sesam oil. Number two, menthol. One gram melted menthol at about 45 degrees centigrade is very good solvent for sesam oil. It also dissolves more than one ml of sesam oil. Okay, so very good solvent melted thymol. Uh, melted menthol, melted thymol both. Now, ethanol is a weak solvent for sesam oil. Ethanol is a weak solvent for sesam oil. Now, I will tell you how can you, and you see, listen to me one thing. Uh, uh, you see, the manufacturers of soybean oil, uh, of this uh, sesam oil, they use hexane for extraction of sesam oil from sesam seed powder. Hexane is colostro-organic solvent. Okay, uh, after removal of hexane, there will be traces of hexane, they may be toxic, number one. Number two, ethanol is a weaker solvent for sesam oil, so uh, uh, manufacturers could not employ ethanol, otherwise ethanol is safer than hexane, because traces of ethanol, they are not so powerful as are the uh, this, uh, traces of hexane, okay. But ethanol could not be employed because of low solvent. Now I will tell you another example. By which a class 3 organic solvent means ethanol can be made a strong solvent like hexane by use of solubilizing power of a solid. Now, as you are seeing here, number 3, 50% weight by volume thymol in ethanol solution, thymol solid in ethanol. Now, the solvent system, now you see the solubility of sesam oil, 1.4 ml sesam oil is nicely dissolved by 1 ml of this solvent system. So you have made uh, ethanol, the class of solvent, a strong solvent like hexane by use of a solid solubilizer, thymol. In the same way, menthol, 50% in ethanol, it is also a strong solvent like hexane. And these solvent systems were employed for extraction. Just uh, as modern, uh, you may say the solvent system, I am not saying you apply thymol, but you can see and then wisely you can take decision what to do, how to do, how the solids can be implied for extraction of ectoconstant. Okay, now one more number five uh, uh, solvent system was made by dissolution of 25% thymol, 25% menthol. In ethanol, this was also a strong solvent for sesam oil. Now, how the extraction was performed, first you listen this thing, then I will uh, uh, tell you what are the advantages of these methods. Melted thymol. We have found that melted thymol is a good solvent for sesam oil. Now the extraction. 3 grams sesam powder and attached to 3 grams sesam powder, fine powder. Okay. Then 9 grams of thymol, 3 grams sesam seed powder, 9 grams thymol and attached to, attached to was immersed in water bath at about 40, uh, 50 degrees centigrade, melting of a thymol was there, so melted thymol, clear color liquid, shaking for 30 minutes during this melted condition of thymol, 30 minutes in water bath. Okay, during this agitation, it's shaking, uh, melted thymol dissolved the sesam oil present in the sesam seed powder. After 30 minutes shaking, now uh, uh, cotton, uh, this cloth was used for straining the liquid. So, a strained liquid. Uh, containing melted thymol together with dissolved sesam oil was kept for an oven at about 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. So there was a removal of thymol and uh, within one hour all thymol was nearly, nearly all thymol was removed, of course some traces were there, then the remaining was sesam oil, sesam oil was there. So just this is the example that you can imply solid for extraction. Similarly, melted thymol extraction was done. Thymol in ethanol at room temperature, shaking for 30 minutes, 3 grams sesame seed powder, 9 ml of this solution. Which one? 3, number 3, 50% midwife with thymol in ethanol. 30 minutes shaking, dissolution of uh, this uh, extraction of this seed oil from sesame seed powder, filtration. But it was kept at about 60 to 80 uh, degrees centigrade for about one hour. Ethanol was evaporated out, thymol was evaporated out. 
so there were many traces of thymol and ethanol no problem what i want to tell you in if you compare with the hexane the traces of thymol they are not so harmful for are uh, traces of the ethanol they are not so harmful sometimes i just forgotten they utilize a blend of ethanol and hexane then they perform the extract and then they remove but then also that there are traces of hexane but here if you apply a thymol there will be traces of thymol so anyway so many things are there to do those who are interested to carry out this type of extraction they may contact me i can give proper advice to them that how can you plan to extraction i am a pharmaceutics person okay uh, i have just uh, uh, superficially i have given this study to you but uh, in this way at least you can take some idea that salts can also be applied for uh, a solvent system of course you take the liquid you see number 6 you take the liquid that was also used for extract so so many things are there but anyway time is limited i have to finish this work this is lecture now you see the extra these are some of the result you can see the paper it is from it is online available okay now coming directly to uh, some information to the students and teachers and researchers that i have made seven uh, videos uh, which are available on youtube uh, each video is of about 40 to 45 minutes duration now if you put these what eco friendly lecture series number 1 uh, you will get this topic eco friendly and economic uv spectro photometric analysis of only water solvent direct by application of microscopy with hydrotopy and mix solvent concept without the involvement of organic solvent we put these what eco friendly lecture series number 2 This, this is for titrimetric analysis. If we put for zero uh, three, it is for uh, mixed solvency concept. Each and every substance, whether gas, liquid, or solid, present in this universe has got solubilizing power. Mixed solvency concept. If we put the word zero four, yeah, so this is for TLC of compounds. Uh, number five is for our reverse phase HPLC. Number six is for dry powder injection for reconstitution. Number seven is for Uh, making innumerable eutectic liquids. You see, this is also very interesting. You can make innumerable eutectic liquids from the books. You will get only few eutectic liquids. But if you apply this or if you see this uh, video, you can make innumerable eutectic liquids for what? For extraction, for synthesis, for analysis, for formulation, and so on and so forth. So in this way, these seven videos you can see. Now some uh, something about the review article. Uh, they are available. Uh, okay, uh, now we are working on a mixed solvency concept. Uh, this is for the book uh, by Dr. Rakesh Kethikade, chapter number five of this book is for hydrotopic mixed hydrotopic mixed solvency concept. And uh, uh, one more book uh, recently it has been published by about nine ten foreign authors. Uh, it is a book uh, uh, I can give the details to those who are who need it. Uh, so it is on green chemistry. Thirteen chapters have been written by uh, uh, foreign authors, mostly for so Indian author as well as foreign from other this year uh, Japan, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Australia, and so on. So forth. they have written a book on green chemistry, uh, and in that there is number six chapter, which is on uh, UV analysis and stoichiometric uh, analysis using hydrotopy. So. and this that book is of springer uh, publication which is renowned publication in the world okay so in this way uh, inter uh, international recognition to this concept has been made i have started this work from 2004 2005 this analysis work uv analysis titrimetric analysis and in this 15 16 year uh, so many persons they have carried out the work and a voluminous work was there and they have this work uh, Uh, because of this voluminous work, uh, four authors uh, from Saudi Arabia, from Egypt, and from uh, one more uh, country, uh, they have written one chapter on this particular book of about 45 uh, pages. Anyway, that uh, information I can give to you if you want. Anyway, now those who are interested uh, to contact me for some clarification, etc. Uh, for some indirect guidance, they can note down my mobile number, which is WhatsApp number nine four zero double six two one nine zero seven. My email ID is akrkmahesuriyadiyau.com. Website is there. Uh, on website also, another matter on hydrotopic mixture. There. So.
so in this way my lecture is over now i am coming to you uh, to, to uh, give the answer for your questions i am stopping the sharing uh hello sir am i audible ah uh, yes you are audible Uh, thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful uh, session. Sir, a few questions from the participants. So, uh, Pintu Kumar uh, is asking, uh, what are the harmful organic solvents? So, maybe maybe he is asking regarding uh, which kinds of organic solvents can be used safely. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, as I have uh, given in my table, uh, class one organics and bending is very harmful. Now, one thing you should be, it, it should be clear to you uh, how this organic solvent they uh, give are uh, injurious uh, effect on the health of human. The reason is suppose you are using benzene. Of course, you are not taking benzene in your formulation. But if you are implying benzene to make some of your formulation, or you are implying benzene in extracts, and or you are implying benzene in PLC. Or if you are uh, implying benzene, uh, benzene instead, for example, UV and other etc. But it means when the, since these are harmful, are these carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, they are very volatile. Uh, they are vapors. They come in uh, in the atmosphere and they are inhaled by the human being. In this way, uh, they give they cause harmful uh, uh, effect for the human being and animal. So, as your question, you are asking which are the harmful organic solvent. So you may say most harm, uh, very means injurious to our health. They are benzene, carbon tetrachloride, one two dichloromethane, etc. Like that, chloroform is also very injurious to our health. Carbon tetrachloride. So we should uh, try to minimize the use of such organic solvent. We can we should use the green chemistry methods. Uh, when you can perform these things by use of green chemistry by hydrographic solution, mixed hydrographic solution. Then uh, you should definitely use this method in place of organic solvent like this. Right, sir. Happily answered, sir. And sir, uh, Pushkar Ray, assistant professor, he is asking uh, why to use uh, thin layer chromatography and other chromatography techniques, and why not to use the electrophoresis technique. So this was the question. I guess maybe he is asking in kind uh, in reference to separation. Mm -hmm. You oh, see. Okay. Yes, sir. Always, all things are important. Don't think that only electrophoresis is, is important. Uh, it may be better than that, but always these methods will definitely exist, whether it is lighting lighting analysis, UV analysis. Okay, and these all methods, TLC, chromatographic methods, they will be HTLC. All methods will be there. Uh, okay, they cannot be abolished. Uh, but only thing is, of course, you are correct that electrophoresis. If it is better than this, then definitely you should perform. Using that, maybe that uh, it is a uh, costly. I don't know. Actually, it is a method. I don't know. Uh, yes. But it maybe it is costly, unlike that. So in this way, there is utility of each and every method. Otherwise, you may also say that now it is pragmatic method. They are not only, but all we all methods are there. Of course, there is a minimum use of pragmatic analysis, but still they are existing in the pharmacopoeia. Then how can you say that uh, you can replace? If a pharmacopoeia is giving titrimetic method, then definitely you will have to perform uh, estimation by titrimetric method only, like this. And of course, you can use the alternate method, but uh, at the time of some you know, the dispute, uh, only the method given in the pharmacopoeia that can be that only that method can be changed, like this. Right, sir. So another question from uh, Pushkar Ray is like, uh, which type of identification test? To be applied after enhancing the solubility of the drug. So I think uh, he is not mentioned the correct thing. Uh, maybe I am not uh, clear about uh, whether he is asking about the uh, additives that we are adding to identify them or uh, this is that's not clear. No, no. Actually, uh, the question is not very clear. Again, can you repeat the question? Uh, so what which, does he want after? Uh, yeah, which type of identification test? To be applied after enhancing the solubility of the drug. Achha, so well, I'm not sure whether he is asking for the drug or he is asking for the additives uh, or the no, solvent no. that he is using. Do one thing. Let me say something. Maybe that uh, it will go answer for the question. You see, yes, uh, suppose we are uh, dissolving, say for example, um, 
say for example tinda jol tap tinda jol in thodi uh, major sun maybe that his meaning is that uh, is there any uh, chemical interaction uh, uh, some new components i don't know but let me explain some of the thing this uh, tinda jol does not react with sodium benzoate in, in this hydrotropic method and if you want to say that how to identify whether it has not made any compound it can be done by tlc it can be done by uv analysis you see in the uv analysis uh, if you see the uh, peak of tinda jol in water it comes at 318 n 318 n and if you are dissolving tinda jol in sodium benzoate solution then also then also the peak of tinda jol comes at 318 n what does it indicate there is no interaction between no chemical interaction between sodium benzoate and tinda jol if there was some interaction then peak might have shifted so in this way or otherwise by use of suppose you are making some perforation in hydrotropic solution or mixed hydrotropic solution you can perform the tlc if you are having the same or a value as uh, that is as uh, that of pure drug if it is the same as in your formulation uh, then this, this means there is no chemical interaction of your drug with the solubilizers i think uh, this question this answer might have satisfied him right sir right sir Sir, another, another question from uh, Ms. Pooja Arya, Assistant Professor. Uh, she is asking, uh, what is the exact mechanism of hydrotropy? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Question is very good. You see, up to this time, the books and the literature of this paper, they say it differently. So, first I am talking about the uh, opinion of the scientists up to this time, from 100 years. What they are saying, the reason for solubility enhancement due to hydrotropic polarization may be due to uh, planar aggregate formation. Planar aggregate formation. As in case of hydro, uh, this uh, micellar solubilization or surfactant solubilization, micelles are spherical. Okay, they are responsible for solubility enhancement. But here in case of hydrotropy, they say uh, the reason for solubility enhancement may be due to planar aggregate formation. Planar aggregate of hydrotropy is in number one. Some scientists they believe the reason may be due to physical complexation between the molecules of hydrotropy agent and molecules of uh, solute like this. Some scientists they say in high concentration, uh, the reason may be due to salting in effect and in low concentration, physicochemical interaction. Some scientists they say may be due to uh, maybe another type of co-solvency means the reason may be another type of co-solvency and uh, some sign and in the last they say till now there is no definite mechanism of hydrotropic solubilization this may be may be may be may be and till now there is no definite mechanism of hydrotropic solubilization for 100 years they are doing so much research and all that but i am giving you the definite myth mechanism definite mechanism is this that always uh, in dissolution as i have explained in, in my lecture that there is always hydrogen bonding weak water water forces between the molecules of solvent and molecules of solute the same thing is here you see how this hydrotropy has come uh, uh, as, as far as my thinking is concerned hydrotropy kaise aaya ye sab in 100 years back, when the scientists they were doing work on high sodium benzoate, sodium acetate, urea, they were seeing these the solids were increasing the solubility. This the, the, this thing was not in their mind. What I think that uh, solids might also be possessing solubilizing power. उन्हें देखा sodium benzoate solution में पानी में आके solubility बढ़ा दी. उन्हें कहा कुछ नई चीज हो गई. Urea ने बढ़ा दिया. ये हो गया. तो उन्हें एक नया नाम रख दिया hydrotropic solubilization. हाइड्रोजन पानी में सॉल्यूटी बढ़ाना लेकिन मैं बता रहा हूं कि सोए अगर ये सोच होती इफ द साइंटिस्ट वर ऑफ दिस ओपिनियन दैट ऑल मॉलिक्यूल्स मस्ट पॉजिटिव सॉल्युबिलाइजिंग पावर तो ये नया शब्द नहीं आता हाइड्रोट्रॉपिक शब्द नहीं आता लेकिन एनीवे द डेफिनेट मैग्नेटिज्म ऑफ हाइड्रोट्रॉपिक सॉल्युबिलाइजेशन इज द ड्यू टू द मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ सॉलिड दे आर प्रेजेंट इन लिक्विड स्टेट एंड दीस मॉलिक्यूल्स आर आल्सो रिस्पांसिबल फॉर हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग एंड वीक वंडरवॉल फोर्सेस विद द मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट इसीलिए सॉल्युबिलिटी बढ़ती है है ना उसमें आप आप किसी भी तरीके से समझा हुआ हमारा जो एक सिंपल एक्सप्लेनेशन है ये अगर आप समझ जाओगे तो आपको ये समझ में आ जाएगा 
आज ये बताओ मेल्टेड यूरिया में डाइक्रोफ्रेट होते क्यों डिजॉल्व हो गया तो अगर इस पर आप इन सब चीजों को देखोगे तो आपको उत्तर मिल जाएगा और वह यही है कि मॉलिक्यूल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन लिक्विड स्टेट और मॉलिक्यूल्स मे बी इन्वॉल्व इन हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग एंड वीक बॉन्डर वन फोर्सेस और इसलिए डिसोल्यूशन हो सकता है और इसलिए होता है हाय सर सर आई थिंक दिस विल बी द लास्ट क्वेश्चन हाउ hydrotropic solubilization affect solubility of uh, lipophilic drugs employed for oral drug delivery and how it is different from surfactants co solvents cyclodextrins this question is from uh, dr manish dal assistant professor ah okay okay see uh, uh, number 1 uh, as you are saying that how they are increasing the something in other way i can explain you you see sodium benzoate urea sodium acetate sodium citrate these are the hydrotropic acids sodium benzoate is very nice hydrotropic acid why it is very nice and uh, uh, hydrotropic acid the reason is sodium benzoate molecule possesses uh, this benzene ring and coona benzene ring is non polar coona is polar okay now uh, as you know that uh, hydrotropic solubilization relates with solubility enhancement in aqueous solution okay now if your drug is water insoluble this means it is lipophilic in character lipophilic in character say for example ibuprofen flavipropen ketoprofen they are uh, hydrophobic drugs are lipophilic drugs okay uh, so uh, as you know like this also like if you want to improve the solubility of this lipophilic drugs you will have to uh, to provide lipophilic environment for solubility enhancement so sodium benzoate solution when it is dissolved in water say 30% 25% 35% there is environment of benzene ring in the solution which is non polar or lipophilic in character so this is the environment of benzene ring and this this is your lipophilic drug because of this there is high solubility of your drug jisko aap bol sakte hai weak van der waals forces ki wajah se solubility badhana to ek to cheez ye ho gayi ki lipophilic environment ko ye provide karta hai sodium benzoate molecule isliye solubility bahut achhi badhti hai niacinamide is also a hydrophobic drug sorry lipophilic type of Uh, uh, structure it has got, and due to this, nesamide also is also a very good hydrotropic acid. Now, आपने जो पूछा बाद में क्या था इनका question एक और last में क्या पूछा था आपने? Sir, basically he asked about uh, yes, ma'am, sir. Yes. So uh, how how it is different from surfactants, co-solvents, cyclodextrins? Ah, okay, okay, okay. How it is different? Okay, that uh, this is also very interesting question. You see, if you uh, uh, keep uh, your, if you uh, you see, as I told you that each and every molecule has got solubilizing power. So whether it is a surfactant, whether it is a cyclodextrin, whether it is a complex acid, all these things they have got solubilizing power. even i have in, improved the solubility of beta cyclodextrin using the solvent system about four times solubility in water it is about 2.5 percent solubility that of beta cyclodextrin but i have implied certain blend uh, of mixed solvent blend in which the solubility of beta cyclodextrin was about 10 percent ab jo jo aaj book mein hum dekhte hain book mein wo ek bucket structure hoti hai ab humne aapki bucket ko hi dissolve kar diya dusri cheezon se हम आपको आई एम नॉट क्रिटिसाइजिंग एनी वन बट वट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल हर चीज में सोलबलाइजिंग पावर होता है तो आप इसको को सोलवेंसी कहो सर्फेक्टेंट सोलबलाइजेशन जितनी भी चीजें हैं चाहे वो आपका सर्फेक्टेंट हो ट्वीन अब ट्वीन आप क्या समझ रहे हैं जैसे आप ट्वीन है आपका ट्वीन आप वाटर में आप डालते हो तो माइसेल्स बनते हैं माइसेल्स दे आर जो बुक कहती है कि माइसेल्स आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सोलबिटी एंड हाथ बट वेन यू डिजोल्व ट्वीन एंड इथना तब क्या होता है तब क्यों वो सोलिटी बढ़ाता है अकेले ट्यून में क्यों सोलिटी बढ़ती है चीजों की तो ऐसे बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जिनका मैं कहूं तो मैं अपनी सिंपल भाषा में सिर्फ ये कहता हूं हर मालिकूल में सोलबलाइजिंग पावर होता है चाहे वो आपको सर्फेक्टेड हो चाहे वो माइसेल बनाए या ना बनाए हम 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 ये नहीं कह रहे आपसे 
लेकिन हमारा जो एक थिंकिंग है वो सब कुछ अलग है और उसमें सीधी बात करते हैं हम कि सॉलिडिटी अगर बढ़ रही है तो देर जो भी चीज सोलिटी बढ़ाता है उसको ये जरूरी नहीं है हमारे पास एक एग्जाम्पल है वो मैं अभी बताने में दोस्तों फिर समय लगेगा लेकिन हम आपसे ये कहना चाहते हैं कि उसमें आपको कोई दिक्कत नहीं आएगी कि ऐसा नहीं होगा कि वो एबजॉर्व नहीं होगा वगैरह वगैरह इस तरीके से नहीं होगा और भी कुछ हो तो आप मैं चाहूंगा कि आपका कांटेक्ट नंबर अगर हमें दो अपन और बात और और भी कर लेंगे आप और बहुत सारी चीजें बता सकते हैं थैंक यू सो मच सर कांटेक्ट नंबर आई ऑलरेडी शेयर्ड सो इफ देयर इज ये कौन थे डॉक्टर सुनो ये कौन थे डॉक्टर सर डॉक्टर मनीष दाल अच्छा ये आपके ही कॉलेज में है नो नो सर ही इज फ्रॉम दिस कमेंट अच्छा अच्छा तो थिंग्स the concept is really very intriguing and uh, it was wonderful to know that uh, the hydrotropic concept is more than 100 years old and in 2008 you started uh, using this concept in the pharmaceutical research and now many faculty members all over india are working uh, on this concept uh, after getting inspiration from you sir uh, like sir as you told us one uh, simple example of uh, solubility of the diclofenac sodium that was 1.6 and after using in the uh using the urea solution uh, the, uh, there was an uh, enhancement of the threefold uh, in the solubility enhancement of the threefolds was observed so you have discussed uh, numerous similar methods and examples to increase the solubility of the drugs and it was very informative session and and i hope today many faculty and students must have been enlightened and motivated to further go deep into this concept and uh, and involve in further research in this field and sir uh, on on the behalf of our chairman sir dr dk garg and and on the behalf of uh, ishan institute of pharmacy greater noda we once again uh, thank you so much for for this uh, for, from the depth of our heart for taking out your uh, precious time for us uh, and sir with this i will uh, like to close this session if participants want further details uh, details and slides of presentation i'll uh, i have shared my email id over here kindly email me for any any material we'll provide you uh, i'll i'll be also ha happy to help you in any uh, material that you require from this sir and thanking all the delegates uh, for join, uh, joining this session uh, this national level webinar and uh, your certificates will be shared soon to your email ids thank you so much sir uh, once again okay thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir